Hello and welcome to Griffin Art and today I'd like to show you how to make this golf themed gift box. So as you can see we have these loop systems on the outside of the box lid which allow us to um, attach some golfing tees and in this particular design there are six loops for golfing tees. On the bottom of the box we have three little feet and that means that the box stands off the ground and keeps the base of the box nice and clean. There's this little ribbon handle and that passes through the ends of the box which have been embellished and reinforced, specifically reinforced, so that the ribbon can take the weight of those golf balls without cutting into the top edge of this end of the box and causing the deterioration of the box. Now there's a quick and easy magnetic closure. You can hear how that snaps shut very easily. And don't worry if you haven't got magnets in your stock. You can buy these for very little money and I will be um, talking to you a little bit more in that respect so that you're not left in the lurch there. And then inside we've got our three golf balls and it just takes three golf balls very nicely it's a very good fit you can see there's not much extra room once you've got those three golf balls in place so that's basically our gift box so I think that's really all I can tell you about the box and that means we're ready to get creative. Now the first thing that we're going to do is score the card for our box base and we're going to be doing that on the wrong side of the card. Now for those of you who aren't used to my tutorials, information such as card sizes, scoring positions, some basic notes are all provided for you in clip form at the end of this video along with a diagram or two so you shouldn't need to go and grab the nearest pad to take copious notes. So getting back to the project I've got my card for my base in landscape position and I'm going to score at three eighths of an inch at three quarters of an inch at one and a half inches two and a quarter inches and at three inches and that's just for one end of my box so I'm just going to turn the card completely you know anti-clockwise twice in effect so just to deal with the other end I'm doing exactly the same thing on this end so in the interest of time I'll do that off camera and come back to you when that's complete Right, so I've now created that same set of score lines on the other end of the card. So we've got this, a mirror image in effect going on. If we were to fold our card in half, those lines would line up and face each other. So what we're going to do at this point is just turn our card into a portrait mode. And it doesn't matter which way you turn it because it is the, the, the score lines on these are, are, have created a symmetrical pattern, so you're fine. So at this point, we're now going to just score at three quarter of an inch intervals all the way down the card, so top to bottom. So three quarters of an inch, one and a half inches, two and a quarter inches, three inches. three and three quarter inches and four and a half inches. Now at this point we're just going to score some guidelines and you know they their necessity will become clear as we progress. So we're just going to turn our card back into landscape mode. We're still scoring on the wrong side of the card. Um, but when we're scoring, we're only going to score down to this second, the bottom of this second row. So let's just do it and then I can show you what I mean. So we're going to be scoring at one and one eighth of an inch. And at two 
and five eighths of an inch. And then we're doing a similar thing the other end as well. So we're going to eight and one eighths of an inch and nine and five eighths of an inch. I'll just show you. We're just sort of, in effect, scoring down the middle of these uh, three quarters of an inch squares and, and just covering two of them. So that, that's what we're doing. And having done that, we, we're going to turn our card and repeat the same process to the, the, the other side. So just to create that symmetry. So I'll do that off camera and then come back to you at that point. Right, so that's all our straight line score lines put into position. And we've just got some diagonal lines left to uh, add to the pattern. And so I've got rid of the scoring board for the time being. Now, this is where those last set of guidelines that I spoke of earlier come into play. So where we've got this central mark at the end of that guideline, this cell here needs to have a triangular shape placed in it. And to do that, we're going to use that, that point and draw to the bottom corners of the cell or square below. So I'm going to do a couple this end to show you what I mean, and then I'll do the rest of camera to save time. So I am using a sharp bone folder for this task because I find it creates a better line. It, 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 it gives me better precision. Now, if you don't have a pointed bone folder, a knitting needle or something like that will uh, do a very similar job. So. Just like to get those score lines firmly in place. And I'll do the same to the one below it just so that you can see. Right, so I'm hoping you can see this on camera. So wherever we have one of these guidelines just going through the first two rows, top or bottom of our pattern, we need to create this set of diagonal lines. So that's on, on this row here or column, on this one, and then exactly the same the other end. Now, just in case that's not clear, this is the pattern diagram that will be made available to you as a still at the end of this video. And you can perhaps see more clearly here. So this is the part of the pattern that we're working on. So, and, and the box has symmetry. So we're just creating these lines at this end, top and bottom, and we're repeating the process this end. So I hope that's clear for you. And again, you know, this perhaps demonstrates that you don't need to worry about trying to remember all this. You will have this pattern at the end of the video as a guide. So I'm going to get to this stage where all these diagonal lines are in place and I'll come back to you at that point. So that's all those little diagonal lines now in place on both ends of my card. And in the interest of time, our next task is to fold and crease all of the straight line score lines that we've created, excluding these little guidelines that don't go all the way across our card. So I have already started to do that. I've done all of these long ones and I have done one end, but for the benefit of those of you who aren't used to gift box making and haven't seen this done before, I'll just um, do this end on camera. Now, uh, all, when you're folding and scoring, if you're new to this, you just need to make sure that you're lining up the score lines on one side of your card, on the, the, the decorative side that you can see, with the score line on the wrong side of your card. So as long as you're completing, can see a square grid as you fold and, and crease, then you should end up with a square finished box. There we are, that's the last one. 
And that's all of those fold lines now ready to go. Now the next thing that we need to do is to start to create our box pattern. And that means that we need to remove some excess card. So the first thing that I do is concern myself purely with the areas above these little triangular points. The, the two pieces of card that have that central guideline are not needed. So we can cut those away, including all evidence of that score line or fold line. So we just take that out. So there we go. If I just show you, this way might be better. That's where my little triangle is. So I'm removing the card above it to the very edge. So there's two square cells to be removed. Now there are eight of these triangles in total. So there's eight sections of card to be removed. I'll do that off camera and come back to you once that's complete. Right, so your pattern shape should now be looking something like this. And I think that gives us a much clearer point to move forward from. So the next thing that we're going to do, all of these long sections here, top and bottom, this, this pattern is very symmetrical, uh, they're simply allowing us to have some fixing tabs. And we don't need that long length. It's going to be too much for our requirements. So all we're going to do, wherever we have one of these end tabs is we're going to cut away the, one of the, the squares above including the fold line. If I do one half of the um, pattern you'll see what we're aiming for. Now it is good to remove the fold line because um, they, they do get in the way of the construction process so you'll have a much easier time when you come to put your box together if you remove that fold line as well. Okay, so you can now see more clearly what I have removed. So I'll repeat that to the other end and come back to you then. Right, so that's now our pattern complete. All the excess card has been removed and this is the shape that we need. Now just as a pointer, do retain a couple of pieces of those card that you've just removed from those tabs because we can use those for reinforcing later. So the next thing that we need to do in order to finish off all our folds is to fold and crease these little diagonal lines that we uh, scored with our self heel mat and sharp bone folder. Now. I find the best way to do this is just to, to fold along the line until you can pinch and form that line. And then once you've got a straight, flat area of your pattern, place that down onto a hard surface and firmly crease that fold line. Right, so if I do another one. So it's just a question of encouraging it into position. Once it's forming its shape, just pinch it along its length. Find that flat area where you're going to be able to place it on a flat surface and then apply pressure to form that nice neatly creased fold. If you've made a milk carton you will be familiar with this fold because um, it does occur at the top of the milk carton closure. Right so I'll just finish that one as well and then I'll do the rest off camera. Okay, so that's one end set ready to go. I'll do the other three sets and come back to you at that stage. So that's now all of our fold lines in place for this box base. And all we're going to do now is as many jobs as possible prior to the uh, assembly of our box, because that's just going to make life easier for us. So the first thing that I'm going to tackle is this end of the box. And just as a pointer, although those score lines were scored centrally within that grid, sometimes when you fold them over and crease them, they move a little bit. So if you've got a scenario, and I've double checked my own here, where you can see this edge of your card, once folded, 
protruding above this edge as you can see here then just trim that back before you start because it's going to make life a lot easier for you so let, let let's just do that it doesn't always happen but if it does it's worth just trimming it back a bit so I'll just take the edge off that card there it only actually happened at one end so there we go so I'll just double check it yes that's fine so so that's just worth doing before you start with this next bit what we're now going to be doing is creating some little tabs that we can fold down so wherever you've got I'll just angle this end one first into that corner and then wherever you've got a fold line you're just really trying to cut it away leaving as much card as possible but definitely removing the fold line it's that sort of compromise I always like to leave as much card on my box patterns as possible because the card strengthens the box so the more you remove the weaker it becomes so take away as little as you can in this scenario um, but do remove the fold line because it's just going to get in the way of your construction And then finally, we'll just angle this end as well so it's not going to interfere with the fold line on the other piece of card. So you're going to end up with a series of these little tabs. And the, all I'm going to do with each of them, I'll just work my way along one at a time, is apply some glue. I'm using PVA glue here. And just making sure you've got good coverage the glue will also strengthen up this card. It provides an additional layer. Then once you can get it down on the surface, just apply your customary pressure with your bone folder or paper creaser and glue the tab down. So I'm going to work along and do all of these tabs. I'll also repeat the process at the other end because our pattern is symmetrical and then I'll come back to you at that point. Right, so with that job completed at both ends, so we've got this nice soft edge now to the top section of our box, we can look at reinforcing and creating the hole for that ribbon handle. Now, each of these nine squares, so with the four triangular sections, represents one box end. And it's this very centre square out of this cross of five, that represents the end of our box if I just show you the original so this center square here is the equivalent of this square here so that's where we need to have the hole and our strengthening as well so the first thing that we're going to need to do is find out where the center of this square is and I'm simply going to go across the diagonals with my ruler now I'm not going to score completely across there because my little reinforcing neatening square may not stretch across the whole of this cell. So I'm just going to mark my pencil line somewhere across the centre. Just by working from one diagonal point to the other and then intersecting them. So you end up with a little mark that represents our square centre there. Now we're going to be using two little bits of reinforcing. The first one which is going on the inside of the box is one of those little bits of offcuts from the tab section that we cut away here. And I've just trimmed it back just to make sure that it will fit nicely in that cell without covering any of those fold or score lines because otherwise it will interfere with the construction of the box. So that's the first thing I've done. I've also followed the same principle of drawing across the diagonals to find the centre of this particular piece of uh, card as well. So we've got that. The second piece of reinforcing is the embellishment that will go on the decorative side of our square. And we, will, we don't need to mark the centre here, we're going to gauge that because the embellishment itself has a natural centre to it so we can work with that anyway. 
Now I'm working with a 1 16th of an inch hole punch here and I'm going to create the holes in the reinforcing first because that's straightforward. So having ascertained where that center point is, I can just line that up in my punch and have a look all the way around. I know you probably won't be able to see, but you just check all the way around to make sure that, that where it's going to punch is in the center of your cross and just punch. So there we are. We've got one piece of reinforcing ready to go. So that's one. The next, we're just going to do the same thing with our flower shape, but we're just going to gauge that by looking at how much of this center section is appearing all the way around our punch as well. So this is slightly more tricky, I find, because it's not exactly circular. So sometimes... You've just got to go for it. So we'll give it a go. There we are. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? So that's my little external embellishment sorted as well. Now with regard to that embellishment, it is a die cut embellishment. And in this case, it's Poppy Stamps Garden Bouquet, but any die cuts that I use throughout this video tutorial will be listed in the description area for this video, so you'll be able to find the details there. So we're now ready to tackle this last hole, and this is a little problematic because my hole punch is not going to reach that point, uh, and so I can't use it for this particular task. Now I do have a leather workers punch somewhere. Yeah. Here it's a this is a little leather workers punch and an anvil that that will enable me to get sort of into the middle of my card area. If you don't have something such as this, don't panic. Um if I hadn't got this particular punch set up, all I would do is I'd use a needle or something my picky pokey tool's a bit bent, but something with a sharp point that you can create a hole in that center point so that you can then get your scissors in and make a slightly bigger hole. Now, you don't want, you want to keep this hole as small as possible, but whatever hole punch you've used for these embellishment pieces, it needs to be at least that size, if not a little bit bigger, because it doesn't match if it's untidy, once these go over the top, they'll strengthen the edges of that hole that you've created here and neaten it up. So, you know, you don't actually need a punch. You can work away with it with a little pair of scissors and a, you know, maybe a tapestry needle to start off with. But, um, you know, I'll leave that decision process with you. Just in case you're interested to see how this little tool works, I'm going to use the bottom of the anvil. You can see the top is sort of, it's meant for those um, oh, stud things, I think. I can't remember exactly what you call them, but anyway, I'm using the, the bottom of it because I don't need that little dent. And I'm just going to position this little hole. It's got a tiny little hole there. Position that over the center of my cross without hitting the camera, give it a whack with my hammer. So here it goes. Ooh, there we are. And you can see that's made quite a nice little hole exactly where I need it. So it's a useful little tool to have. So all that leaves me to do now is to apply those embellishments. Now you do have to be careful with these little ones. You can see that they're actually designed to be outline embellishments. So these little petals can sometimes want to come out. So you need to be a little bit careful with them. So I think I'm going to stick this one on first just to keep that intact. So I'm just going to use some PVA glue. I'll use my normal method of putting plenty on and having some absorbent paper towel available as well. Just very gently spread that glue about. I do want it to get to the edges here. Okay. 
And this, of course, will hold the whole thing together once it's in place anyway. So just take off that excess glue that's on the back there because you can see there's plenty of it and I don't want it oozing everywhere. So that's, that's reduced it down to an acceptable amount. And I can then just line that up over the hole. Now, when you're if you're using this embellishment, there is a sort of right and wrong way. There's um, You can either have two petals at the bottom or one. This is the top of your box where those tabs are. So if it's a question of lining everything up, um, just bear that in mind because I didn't notice it the first time and you learn from your mistakes. So you may as well learn from mine and your box will be perfect. So it's just a question of positioning that over that hole and centrally on that end square and then applying some pressure to allow that to take a hold. So that's the external embellishment and we're just going to use a similar process with the internal one. So just glue, this one's not so critical if glue oozes because it will be on the inside of the box and the PVA dries clear anyway so it dries a bit shiny but You'd have to really peer inside the box to notice any oozing. So it's the same thing, just making sure that it's positioned in such a way that none of those um, edges go over the fold line. Just check it both sides for positioning. Again, apply that pressure until you're happy with the bond. And that's immediately strengthened up that central square. So I shall do the same the other end because it's box pattern sym symmetrical you've heard me say it before and then I'll come back to you now with all of that done we are getting very close to the point where we can start considering our magnets now one thing I should have done at the very beginning of this project and would advise you to do at the beginning of the project is to set your magnets up now I'm using a very sort of thin card. I, I want it to be stiff enough to hold the magnet, so it needs to be more than paper, but you don't want too bulky a card because it, it's just going to be sandwiched in between uh, you, the front of your box and it will create bulk if it's too thick. So you need some little strips of card for your magnets that, you know, rough cut, doesn't really matter, but not too big. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Now the magnets that we're going to be using are tiny little magnets. These are actually three mil in diameter by one millimeter thick, but they're very strong. Now I paid £2.23 for 50 of these, including delivery, and I just got them off eBay. So what I'll do, eBay people tend to come and go a bit, so I'll put down the details of what you need to be searching for in terms of magnets and then you know you can do your own searches and and hopefully find a supplier now what i will say is that i bought two types the first set of magnets were was something called they were a, a grade called n35 and there's if you've got those magnets in stock don't worry, just use them, they're fine. But if you are looking to purchase magnets, you want to be looking for a higher number. These are actually N52s. So the higher the number you go, the stronger the magnets. So that's just something for you to bear in mind. But I'm not going to try and pronounce them, um, but the spelling and everything there will be in the description area for you. So. For each set, I need three sets of magnets and they are poled, so, and they're very friendly, they love to come together. So I'm just going to nip two magnets off the end. I don't know whether you can see that. Just two, a set of two, and they're going to stay together nicely. And now I do need a strong glue for this, so I have changed my glue unusually. So the glue that I'm going to be using in this case is a Liquitex matte gel and I've, I looked on the internet and people were using it for all sorts of metal things and I did a test and have been really happy with how strongly this can hold the magnets. So all I'm going to do in the first instance, get a scrap piece of card 
and I'm going to put a little bit of glue on one of these bits of card here. It's quite a lot there actually, but you know, you do want a reasonable amount. I hope you can see it. And then all I'm going to do initially is place that those combined pieces of magnet or magnets onto that glue just like that to so just sit it on top of that glue I'm going to then take another piece of card and another little bit of glue sort of spread that over this end of the card it doesn't matter that there's excess and then similarly just drop that on top so that that each one of the magnets has got glue on one side and I know that it's the right side in terms of the poles because you know if you if you haven't got the poles right they're not going to come together they're going to sit side by side so I don't know whether you can see that they are just sat in that glue the, the 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 downside of this particular glue is that it does take a while to go off but then I guess you've got to compromise when you want strength so I need three sets like this so I will do that and I will just set them all aside and when you set them aside make sure that those bits of card have got at least 10 or 12 inches between them because those magnets are so strong if you're putting them a couple of inches away they're all going to come together so um, and until they've got that bond you do need to keep them separated so right, I'm just going to set up those other um, magnets in preparation and then I can start to focus on what it is we need to be doing next. Right, so whilst the glue is uh, going off on our magnets, we can at least look at creating the holes that will house them. Now there are a couple of reasons why I like to create holes for these magnets. If we just look at this prototype box, when you get, even though these magnets are only one millimeter thick, two of them together, obviously two millimeters thick, and that's quite a thickness to separate these two pieces of card that you really want to bring flush together. So by creating a hole that will recess them, you know, that, that stops that protruding aspect of the magnets and, and, and creates a, a much neater finish. Now the other thing is, by recessing them in a hole, you can also get glue around the outside edge of the magnet and that secures it better as well in my view. So those are a couple of reasons why I like to recess them into holes in the cardboard. Now a guide to where we're going to position those magnet holes is provided in that diagram that I showed you earlier, but there are a couple of things that I want to make you aware of. So, so far our box has got had symmetry all the way along. So it doesn't really matter whether we use this side of the box pattern or this side. We just need to choose one for the front. And our magnets are actually going to be, this flap will fold inside our box to reinforce that front edge of the box. So our magnets need to be positioned along this bottom edge, you know, a little distance from this next fold line. So I have created a template because it's going to be easier to line the magnets on the base and the lid if you work with the template. So I would advise that you, you create a template that's basically a three quarter inch width, which is equivalent to one of the widths of these panels. Now, as far as the length of the panels goes, the only thing that you need to bear in mind is that the lid is slightly less wide. So if we take a look at this prototype again, you can see that that's the end of a panel, but the lid is set in by about an eighth of an inch on either end. So when you're creating that template, just remember that. If we have a look inside, we can see on the lid there that I've really just positioned one in each corner, set in a bit, and one in the center. Now, if you're at all concerned, you can err on the side of caution and bring them in a bit. It, it, it will be fine. The only guidance really that I can give you, when you set this up on here, this width that I've created is more or less the width of the lid. And um, it just means that 
as long as you're about three eighths of an inch in from this edge to the outside edge of your corner holes, you should be absolutely fine. Right, so all I'm going to do here, I'll bring it up to the camera so you can see. I know that this is the same width as my panel. So I'm going to position that so that I have an equal amount of space either end framing it. And at that point, I've got the positions for these three magnet holes. So I can then just set that down on a firm surface, keeping it in that fold line, and just draw inside those template holes to create my positions. So I've now got my three holes. I hope you can see those. So at this point, I can come in with my punch. Now, I have um, used a larger hole punch. This is a 1 8th of an inch hole punch. We use the 1 16th of an inch for these little end bits. But I'm going to follow the same principle and just line everything up over that pencil line. Make sure that that's where the punch is going to create my hole. And off we go. So there we have it. And I can also get at this one, this end, to do the same thing. Now the problem with this one, I can't reach it. So I am going to go through both layers. Now bearing in mind that this may not be totally symmetrical, this is the side that I've got my little template label on. So I'm simply going to position that in the same place. So the lay you can't see the label now because it's um, against the card. Then if I line up my holes that I've already punched I can then identify where that central hole needs to be and lightly draw a pencil mark around there. I'll then fold that top panel inside my box, line up my punch in the same way as I have before And punch through both layers. Now that does mean that I'm going to have a little hole on the inside of the box but you know what it's quite neat and I really don't have a problem with that. Whilst we're sorting out holes we may as well sort out the positioning for our feet and I will put the details of these on e um, on in the description area for you. I just got them off eBay and they have a sort of split pin type arrangement for these um, I only bought them recently, so you know that they should be around. But uh, what I'll do is I'll put a, a, a item for you to search on on uh, Google or something like that, just in case you know you're watching this video when it's been around for a while. So I've actually chosen to use three feet for my box because there's not a lot of room and by the time you get these side by side it's going to be quite tight so it's a personal thing and I will leave it up to you to decide how many feet you want to put on your box if any but I'll continue with this tutorial in the way that the prototype has been built and that will at least give you a basis to work upon. Now I have created another template and this is pertinent to front and back because if we have another quick look it's two feet at the front in this design and one at the back and the fact that we've punched our holes for our closure which we know is at the front of the box I now know that in the base section here this is where I need to place my template with the two holes at the front so that's the way around it needs to be so all I'm going to do is having positioned that centrally within that uh, very base panel and that's the one that lines up with these end sides where we've already reinforced. So it's that panel we're concerned with. I'm just going to draw around those little holes so that I can transpose where my holes need to be positioned for my feet. Now unfortunately I'm back to that position where I cannot fit my hole punch into that space. So I am going to use my little anvil and leather punch as I did before. 
but if you haven't got that uh, sort of punch available and you, you know you've got to use uh, a sharp point and then your scissors again you don't need to worry too much as long as the hole that you make will be hidden by the circumference of this foot you'll be fine because you will be reinforcing the inside of your box so um, th there'll be card covering that as well and obviously on the um, the, the reinforcing section will cover the whole of that area. Now I'm not going to punch those holes on camera because you've already seen how that works. So I'll sort that off camera and come back to you once that's done. Right, so with all of those holes now in place, I can start to pay attention to this front section where my magnets are going to be. Now, we will treat the back and front exactly the same, but I just want to show you if once this little corner end is in, has been folded in place, it's actually going to be in the way of this little corner of card here. So whilst I like to leave as much card on the box as possible, I haven't got a choice in this instance, I've got to get rid of these corners. So front and back just need to take off a corner section. And this is shown on that diagram, so you will know that you've got to do that without having to remember. So I'll do the same with the back, but I can do that off camera. So the next thing I'm going to do is look at my magnets. Now, if you remember, we put these together and this actually, if you're using a glue that you're not sure of, this is a good test. If once they've glued together, you can't pull them apart without the magnet coming away, you know that you need to reevaluate your glue. And so that is a good solid test. Now, my magnets are drying off. I've, I've, I've got, I can now apply them to my box and I'll just do one on camera so that you can see what's going on. So bearing in mind, when we put these together, we did them in pairs so that we knew the direction of the pole. So as you deal with these and you split them apart, keep the other half separate. Uh, you know, you, you want to just use a half of each of your pairs because then you know that the poles are right when you come to put them in your lid. You might want to do a dry run just to make sure that your little strips of card are not interfering with any fold lines or going over the edge. Once you've sorted that out, you're ready to apply more glue. And I am going to be using more of my Liquitex gel mat because I'm hoping to get some of that glue around the edge of my magnet just to provide further adhesion. So if I put a little bit of glue on there, just go all the way around that magnet. Don't worry if you're getting it on the surface of the magnet, that can be wiped off once the magnet is in place. So I'm just covering that area of card out of the way. And then it's just a question of putting the magnet into the hole that you've created. Just making sure that everything's all right. You can flip the card over and then just wipe the surface to get off any surface glue. Apply a little bit of pressure so that that card will stick down. So that's all I'm going to do, I'll do that with the remaining two magnets and I'll trim off this back edge in the same way that we've done the front and then I'll come back to you at that point. Right, so now that all those three magnets are in position, I can now look at reinforcing some of this base section and it is in the cutting list at the end of the video but you've got three reinforcing strips which will go into your base section because these flaps will reinforce the sides. So we're just filling in the remaining sections. Now they are just five eighths of an inch in this dimension here. And it just basically means that they fit inside the panel without interfering with any of the fold lines. All I'm going to do, I've put some double-sided tape down the center, which provides me with that instant adhesion and then I'm just going to add some PVA glue so I can get to those edges and that will give me a nice strong bond as well. So that's what I'm doing here. I'll just do this one on camera to save time. Here we go, remove the backing tape. 
So I'm just going to line that up on one of these panels that's adjacent to that base panel with the feet holes. Apply some pressure. And that's sorted. So I'll now put the other one in this position here and then I'll come back to you so that we can sort the feet out. Right, so that's two of my reinforcing strips fitted and that really does make a difference to how sturdy that side of that box is. And you can also see that I have already fitted two of my three feet. So I tend to like to start the pin off here and just split them apart a little. It seems to make life easier, but I'll leave that to you. Just stick that through the hole that you've made for it, as you might expect. Just split the pin apart and then I do like to set it on a surface and get my bone folder to, to really apply some pressure and make sure that that metal is going down as close as possible to the foot itself. Once you've done tackled it from this side, flip the card over, apply pressure to the foot from the decorative side and that's about the best that you can do. Now that means that we can now apply this final decorative strip and I will do that on camera because um, I just want to show you how I can apply the pressure with this. I have tried putting this in uh, after the box is assembled because I thought it might have been easier to, to put the box together without the feet in place but actually I find, I personally find putting the feet on at this stage, the easier option. Right, so reasonable amount of glue. There is going to be some resistance along these edges because of those metal strips. So I like to get plenty of glue in place. Remove the backing tape. And just follow the same procedure as you did before. Avoiding any fold lines, applying that pressure. Once you're happy with the positioning, this time just flip the box over to the decorative side and then you can apply pressure with your bone folder from this side and just work that so that that gets glued into place. Now it does require a little bit more work than those others because wherever you've got that metal strip it tends to want to lift. So you might want to just go over it a few times until you're sure that that glue has taken. So I'm going to do that and just keep an eye on that off camera. And once I'm sure that's sorted, I'll come back to you. Right, so I'm now happy that that is nicely glued in place. And that means that that is our completely reinforced box base pattern and we can start to assemble. So with that in mind, I've already put double-sided tape on all areas requiring adhesion to save time. And we can now look at starting to put it together. So the first thing that we need to do is draw up these ends. And we're going to be using these little end tabs to position the uh, corners and keep them in place. So double-sided tape on the tab for that instant adhesion. I do find it helps and then my trusty PVA glue as well for that long-term strong bond. So I'm just going to spread that out and remove that backing tape from there. And just, this is where those, if you, as long as you firmly crease those diagonals, you shouldn't have any trouble here. So it's just a question of lining everything up making sure that that corner is nicely in line and these edges as well, where these fold lines are. And then just holding that in place till that double-sided tape has taken a hold. And then particularly in areas where you haven't got interference from the magnet, just use your bone folder in the normal way to apply some additional pressure until you're sure that that has got a bond. So that's the first, and you can see how that's starting to form that corner. I'll do the rest off camera, and then I'll come back to you once all those 
tabs have been joined together. So now that we've drawn all of those corners up, we can put these back and front sections down. I've already put double sided tape, removed the backing tape from there and set some glue up, PVA glue on there. So it's just a question of folding that down then. I've done the front because of the magnets being there. Um, just applying some pressure around the, those magnet areas and maybe because of the bulk of those magnets also just using your fingers just to pinch that card together where you can't easily get at it with your burn folder. So that's then put that front section down and the back section will go down in very much the same way. So I will do that off camera and come back again at that point. So that's the sides, so it's front and back finished and that just leaves us with these little tiny end tabs to, that just complete the ends of our box. I've done one set off camera as you can see there, so I'll just quickly do these remaining two and that will bring us to the end of our base section. I do like to put quite a lot of glue on these end bits because they're quite little. Um, so you do want to have a complete coverage. So it's just a question of tucking them in. You're forming that corner triangle again. Just lining up your fold lines. And just holding it in place until that adhesion takes a hold. And then we'll just repeat that on this side as well. Tucking that inside there, pushing that into the corner to form that corner triangle and letting the glue do its job. So there you are. That's our base now complete. Front with the magnet set in, feet are in place. And we can now set that aside to start considering our lid. So I've now set up my Martha Stewart scoring board again so that I can prepare the pattern for my lid. Now the lid is taking up a piece of card that is just quarter of an inch off square. And in this case, the five inch position is here and the five and a quarter inch position is here. So effectively, although it's not obvious, we are in landscape mode and I am scoring on the wrong side of the card. So I'm just going to score at three eighths of an inch and at four and seven eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to turn the card anti-clockwise, although it really doesn't matter, and score at five eighths of an inch in the portrait mode. I'm now going to fold and crease that five eighths of an inch score line so that I can then look at positioning the holes for the other half of my magnet. Right, so my magnets are actually going to be positioned on this section of card here. And in order to line these up, this is going, this is the lid of the box, so it's the front of the box that we have here. And we want that to be positioned on that first fold line below the magnets. That's, that's where we're going to hope to achieve that sort of nice flush line. Now, the best way that I've found to do that is to use the magnets. I'm still going to use my template. So if I fetch that back and I can put that in place. Now we already have established that that is approximately the width of the lid. So that's roughly in place and our lid is positioned on that fold line. What we can now do is use our magnets. So use the other half of the magnets and that will draw, they'll naturally want to draw onto the top of each other and that will just 
um, make sure that the positioning of that template is correct. So, you know, I don't need to hold that anymore. The magnets are holding it. And that means they are actually facing each other. That's where they want to be. And I can just double check and I'm happy with the positioning on the line there as well. So all I need to do now is still hold that template in place and remove a magnet one at a time and just draw the positioning of that template hole. And last one. And that now means we are ready to punch those holes in place. That's our magnet position, so we can punch our holes in place. Now, I am going to be using the 1 8 of an inch hole cutter again for that purpose, but you've, you know what that's all about now. So I'll do that off camera just to save a little bit of time. Right, so those holes were punched and all, to save time, I've also glued those magnets in place in the very same way as we did with the other half of the magnet. So just using my Liquitex gel mat um, and you know covering the magnet area, wiping off any surface uh, glue off the magnets. Now the only thing that you need to bear in mind here, just remember that you created pairs of magnets. So before you glue them in place, do make sure that the magnet is coming up against its opposite number. Otherwise, you know, you might find that they're fighting each other when you come to put your lid against your box. So the next thing that I'm just going to do is to trim across these corners because we have got a mitre finish here. So I just need to bear in mind where that magnet hole is and avoid it and just trim across the corner. The same this side. And that now means that we can stick up this front flap. So I'm, all I'm going to do there is use my normal combination of double sided tape and PVA glue, which you've seen me do plenty of times before, and that will need to just dry off a bit. So I'll get that into that position and come back to you once it's had a, a little chance to settle down. And then we can look at fitting this to the box. Right, so that's just been glued down. So we've got a, a nice finished edge to the front edge of our lid now. And that means we can start fitting the lid to our box base. So all we're going to do is take our box base and find the front with the magnets and let the magnets take control. So we already know that that is where our lid needs to be positioned. Now, when the, this is, the method I'm now going to show you is the best method that I have found when it comes to joining box components together. So the, the measurement that we're going to achieve next here will vary from box to box depending on the thickness of card, where the line has been creased, you know, how accurate that has been. So, you know, I do find it best to fit as you go. And the method that I use is I just, with that in position now, I'm just looking for where my next fold line occurs. So I can see that this, this fold line continues around here and I'm just going to mark a pencil line on the lid of my box to indicate where that fold line is. So I hope you can see that. I'm then going to place that pencil line over any groove on my scoring board. It doesn't matter which groove as long as it's going over a groove. Just double check that that's the case and it is. So as long as I then keep this straight edge of my card tight up against this part of my scoring board, I know that the line that I score will be square. So I just do that now. I can now just fold and crease, just move that slightly, 
fold and crease along that line that I've created. And that forms my first fit. So just get that back on the box. And that's forming my first fit. So I will just continue in that way, marking my pencil lines. So we'll get the next one there. Placing that on my scoreboard, scoring the line. So I'll continue to do that and I'll come back to you at the point that we're doing the final line. Right, so I've now fitted all of that lid to my base. So you can see we've got the front of the box here and the back here. And you can see that this card is oversized now. We don't want this excess. So I've still put my pencil mark in at the top here to indicate where that final fold line is. And just as a double measure to make sure I'm on track, I've also created a similar pencil mark on the other end as well. At that point, I've just used my ruler to join those lines to indicate where that excess card is. And I'm now just going to take my scissors and cut away that excess. I'm just cutting along that pencil line that I created. So at this point, just double check it for you, we've now got our fit complete. So we can now start finishing off our lid. Now all that means is that we're going to fold and crease those other, those other two score lines that created the uh, sides of our box. So we'll fold and crease those. Now if you've got any excess overlap here on this corner, you can neaten that up just to reduce any bulk there. But the other thing that we need to do is just then create the tabs in the same way that we did for our box space component. So I'll just start things off so that you've got a quick reminder. It's a case of angling the end so it's not going to get in the way. And then removing these little fold lines to create some tabs. We're leaving as much card in place as we can, but removing the fold line. So I'm sure that's reminded you. So we're just creating these tabs and I will do that so that all of these sections across here form tabs. I will then glue those down in place onto the inside of my box. And at that point, I can come back to you. Okay, so that's all those little flaps glued down. So it's really neatened up our box lid now. So the next thing that we're going to do is deal with joining our lid to our box. But before we do that, bearing in mind that this is the back panel and this fold line is the hinge section in effect. It is good just to bend that the wrong way before we start and just crease it just to train it that it does need to bend in both directions. So it's just helping it on its way in that respect. So that's just a little bit of a, a tip. Now, I've already applied some double-sided tape along there to allow me to join that to my box. I'm going to take my base and just allow that magnet to take control again. Apply some PVA glue, quite a lot actually, because this, particularly along where this um, top edge is, because it's going to be against that point where it's constantly opening and closing. So, you know, you do want it to be stuck in place fairly well. So we get that sorted. We'll remove that backing tape. And then all we're going to do is to make sure that we're happy that all those fold lines are forming in the right place, make sure those magnets at the front are connecting properly and just bring that down to that fold line at the back where it needs to settle. 
just check the ends that the fits good enough for you and once you're happy apply some pressure along that area where that double-sided tape is just so that that has that instant bond action and then once that's taken you can open your box and just apply the pressure from the inside just to make sure that bond is occurring all the way along that back edge and just in case there's any oozing it is just worth leaving that to go off for a few moments uh, before tackling the rest of the embellishments so I'll come back to you once it's had a bit of time to go off right so now that that's had time to go off and we've been able to put our lid back down we can look at our first layer of embellishments for that lid and there are a few things here that make life a little bit easier that I want to point out to you the first thing is you can see that the front and back of our boxes are now looking very similar and it's easy to get in a muddle when you're applying embellishments at this stage so having ascertained that that's the front I'm just going to flip that over and centrally on this back panel I'm just going to mark a little B for back so that I know that that's my back at a glance so that's the first thing that can help the second thing that I'm going to do is take my piece of card here and find out roughly where the central position is I'll leave it raised off the very bottom here but I think it should be just over one and a half inches when it's positioned centrally. Just wants to go very marginally this way. Yeah, that's looking about right. So having ascertained that position, straighten him up a bit, I'm going to mark two little points on the edge here not in a place where it's going to be covered up so very slightly in from this edge it's a little pencil mark either end and that means when i come to position this i don't know if you can see them i know immediately that as long as i've got a similar amount either side of my embellishment that's going to be positioned centrally on my box so that's a pointer the final thing that I'm going to do now, having marked B for the back there, I'm going to flip this over onto the wrong side and mark F. You can't see it very well, but I've just marked an F on the front there. Because once you finish fitting and cutting this, it's going to be difficult to tell which was the front and the back. And you are fitting these to the folds on your lid. So all we're going to do now is follow the same procedure that we did when we fitted the lid to our box. So it's simply a question of holding it in place, making sure that that edge is nicely positioned straightly on the edge of your lid, marking the fold line with the pencil, putting it down on your scoreboard, scoring the line, creasing it, refitting. So we're just going through that same process. So I won't do that on camera because it's a complete waste of your time. You do know what we're doing now in terms of fitting each of these layers. There will also be excess at the back and that will be trimmed back in the same way that we trimmed back the excess of the lid. So I hope that's clear enough for you. I will get to that position off camera and come back to you when that's sorted. Right, so that's my embellishment all fitted to my box in, in the same way that we did the lid. So all I'm going to do now is tackle this first flap. So I know that's my front because that's where I've marked a little F. I'm just going to apply the PVA glue to that first panel where that double-sided tape already exists put that on to save time off camera so get that done remove the backing tape and then using those little pencil marks that I drew earlier you may not be able to see them just use them as a basis for lining that up and positioning that embellishment centrally now 
it is best to let this first one go off because if you start to try and stick the second panel it's going to want to pull so it's a good idea once you've applied some pressure made sure that's down give it a minute or two for that glue to go off before tackling the rest once once that's gone off this can go down fairly quickly but you do need to be a bit patient with this very first panel so i will let that go off i'll fix the rest in place in the in the normal way and come back to you at that point so now that that embellishment has been fixed to our lid and by the way when you fix these embellishments i didn't mention that you do need to do it whilst the lid is closed what you're trying to do here is create this curved aspect to your lid if you apply the embellishments when the lid is in a straight uh, position it won't naturally want to curve to the shape of the box when it's closed so so do just make sure that in applying these embellishments the lid is closed now our next layer of embellishment involves a die cut shape specifically from this Spellbinders Nest Stability Set, which is long classic scalloped rectangles large, but that information will be found in the description area for this video. Now, in order to find the length of die cut that I required for my lid, I needed to go with this mid-size die cut from that, that range, and clearly you can see that that's too big. This is the die cut shape that comes out of that particular die cutter. Now, I actually ascertained that the width I wanted was as far as five of these little scalloped shapes at the top here. So in order to sort that out, all you need to do, just in case you don't know, is to place your shape back into your die cutter so that you're only including those five scalloped edges that you want. You then run that through your die cutter and it will cut away the excess card and leave you with this shape, which then is the width that in this case I was looking for. Now, if you hadn't already guessed, we are going to be fitting this embellishment to the box in exactly the same way as we've just fitted the previous one. There's just a couple of differences. First of all, we're going to place it slightly above the edge of the lid so that you get this sort of little framework going on so you can see this contrast color just showing through so that that's you need to place place it in that position to make your first mark now you will find that there is excess left at the end and in this case you're not going to remove it form a final fold and crease line and then that will get glued to the back of the box so let me just show you on this prototype here so it just gets glued to the back of the box and creates this nice finish in the process. So you know exactly what I'm going to be doing. There's no point in me doing all of that um, whilst I'm on camera. So I'll get that attached in the interest of time and come back to you once it's sorted. Right, so with that layer of embellishment added, I'm, I'm sure you can begin to see that this box is taking shape and at this point it is already a very strong box. Now the next thing I'm going to be applying to the box are these thin sort of strips of card and they just go on the lid at either end. Now to create those I have used a die cutter. It's a paper smooches wise dies and it's dots and dashes but again I'll put that in the description area for you in case you're interested in that. One of the things I was going to show you, I've this is the die that I've actually used, it's a sort of thin die and when it passes through the die cutter, I don't know whether you can see but you it indents the card so you can see the outline of the die itself. So once I've cut that pass that through the the die cutter so it le all it does is it takes out these sort of dashes i then use that impression to cut the strip out of the card so that's how i end up with this embellishment strip now in order to fit that to my lid i'm just going to use a little bit of pva glue on one end
and I don't this doesn't need to be pre-fitted -fit, it's um, thin enough that you can bend it as you go now this is positioned on the lid slightly away an equal amount so you've got sort of a frame just over probably one eighth of an inch and all I'm going to do is lay that initially on that box until I know that that glue has taken and once that has taken so I, you know I won't I won't I will leave it for a, a minute or two I can then very quickly apply the glue to the rest of this strip and work around and I can use my bone folder just to work over those fold lines and and you know that will then fit nicely the only one thing to bear in mind is that you're going to create this mirror finish on the back so when you get to the back you don't want to cut it at this point here you're going to just cut it a little short so that you get the same effect in the design front and back so i think that's fairly straightforward so i may as well do that off camera and come back to you once we're ready for the next set Right, so now that we've got those end embellishments in place, we can start to look at this middle section that is designed to take our teeth. And I've got a piece of card here that's nine and a half inches in length by three and a quarter inches wide, and it is over length because we're not quite sure how much of this is going to be taken up with those little T loops. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is attach a piece of ribbon down the center, and I've already put some double-sided tape on the back of a piece of six millimeter gross grain ribbon and I'm just going to remove that backing tape a little bit at a time and gauge where the center of this strip of card is and just position it in that sort of rough center position. Now I use double-sided tape with ribbon because PVA would certainly get absorbed into the fabric, it would make it cut um, dark in colour and it would also over time make it very brittle so the double sided tape adhesion doesn't do that it doesn't get absorbed into the fabric at all so I, I do like that form of adhesion what glue you use I will leave up to you if in doubt at all just apply some to a length of ribbon and see how your ribbon behaves with it we all have our favourite glue, so I will leave that choice up to you. Now, the one thing I would say is that I wouldn't omit this ribbon. The reason for putting the ribbon on here is because when the T's are placed in inside these loops, we want them to be quite tight. On this prototype, actually, some of them are a bit too loose. They, they need to be tighter than that, and I have improved this. Now, in, in so doing, this card can get stretched and this ribbon just gives it that little bit of bracing, will stop the card from splitting. So I would advise that you don't omit the ribbon if you're doing this section, this, this T section of this box. Um, by all means, use a wider ribbon, but you know I would avoid omitting it altogether. So the first thing that I now want to do is ascertain, make sure I've got the front of my box, ascertain where I want my first T to be positioned and that's probably that's not going to be on the front panel it's going to be on this second panel here and the center of it is probably going to be at about that point so I'm just gauging it it's you know about there and I'm not going to fuss around I'm just going to use my nail as a guide my thumbnail and fold that backwards and then I'll put that crease in there and that's where my first T is going to sit on that piece of card. Now from this point forward, I'm now going to curl this card much in the same way as you would, you know, ribbon, you know, that you use with gift wrapping, that sort of thing. Oh, I want to go. It's just because you do want to have your card curl around your T's. You don't really want too much of an angular situation going on. So it's best to curl it at this stage. It's going to be far easier to do that at this stage. Just using 
back of the bone folder. And just down to that fold line that we've just created. That is quite thick card actually, so some cards will, will curl better than others. This one probably resists a bit more than, than some, but that's fine. So that's the first thing. That now means that we can position this on the front of our box. So I'm just going to use a little bit of double-sided tape and glue in the normal way. If I can find the end, there we go. But I'm just going to glue up to that fold line there. And we are going to need to let this sit, just this first bit. You know, once you've got the end sort of attached and secure, you can pull on the rest of it, but you do want the first bit to be secure before you start. So just remove that backing section. And you're lining this up with the very front edge of your lid, essentially. about right and we're going to make sure all of that section goes down so I'm just going to open that up a bit for the minute so I can get at it maybe put a ruler edge in along there just to make sure that that fold is getting glued in place and then we're just going to set that aside to allow it to dry. Now just while that glue is going off we need to have a look at our tea size because you know I'm, ass I'm assuming that they're going to vary according to manufacturer and possibly even batch. These are little painted wooden ones. The length perhaps you might be interested in knowing just if you want to match this box. So they're two and a quarter inches long and you know that's where they're sitting as a reminder on the box that's two and a quarter inches there now the thing that we need to be able to ascertain is how much of that strip of card is going to be taken up by our T so what I've done is I've taken another strip of card in a similar card type in fact this is the same card type and I've just folded one end of it and then I'm I've wrapped that around the T where that T is going to be situated, so roughly where the T will be situated in that um, in that loop. So just to try and find the circumference of that stem. Having done that, I can fold those lines back and that starts to give me a rough idea of how much in this particular card the T is taking up and actually it's quite interesting this this is five eighths of an inch and in a lot of other cards that I've been using it's been just over five eighths of an inch so you know they do vary and this is why you have to um, fit to your product so that I can remember five eighths of an inch and that's going to help me with the next phase Right, so I've just checked the box and that glue has now gone off sufficiently so that we can look at the next phase of this. Now, we just checked that measurement. We said it's five eighths of an inch. So that's what I need to allow roughly for my T. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to fuss around with loads of exact measurements. I'm just going to roughly grab that with my thumbnail where that needs that bend needs to be and bend it backwards. Now, the only thing that I would say here is it, it's best to err on the side of caution in terms of there being slightly less than five eighths of an inch than over because you can always separate these two marker points rather than, you know, you can leave a little bit of a gap. I don't know whether you can see that. What I'm going to be doing is bringing these two points together on my card. But I can leave a little bit of a gap if I haven't, if I feel that the T is too tight in that loop. So the next thing I'm going to do before I worry too much about my T is think about the positioning of the next T. So that 
again it's very rough I'm just going to gauge with my thumbnail roughly where I want it to be and I'm going to then bend that card back again and create another fold so if I can take one of my T's and double check how that's shaping up Oops. So we can pop that. This card is not curling as well as some cards, to be fair. But um, so that might need spacing a little bit further. No, that's okay. So what I'll do is I'll then apply some glue to this area of the card between those two folds because that's going to create that loop. So if I just do that. And then bring those two points together, keeping it all nice and straight. And that's setting me up for that next T as well. So I'm just going to encourage that shape a bit more. Pop my T in there. Make sure that's a tight fit. Just, if in doubt, you just check your fit. But what you do, what you don't want is that loop to be too loose. If anything, err on the side of caution. Generally speaking, um, given a little bit of encouragement the card will stretch and it's better that you're in that scenario than the T is dropping out of these loops they do these do need to be tight enough to hold your T so you know just err on the side of caution a little make it tighter rather than looser is what I'm trying to say to you so there we go that's absolutely fine so I'm going to let that go off and then I will come back and do one more. In fact, what I'll do is I'll do the next one off camera um, and then I'll show you how that pans out for the one on the next panel. I think that's the best way forward. So I'll do one off camera and then I'll come back to you to do the next one. Okay, so that first loop, I hope you can see, is now set up, it's all dry and you can see that that T is a good fit on there. Now what I've then done is having glued that position down for my next T place, I've then measured that 5 eighths of an inch uh, length of card and created a fold. The next thing to do is position that fold against the fold underneath and then from there, you want to carry on the card round to your next T position and form another fold. I know it's a bit complex, but I hope you can get the gist of it. Um, so that those two folding points there then give you your next platform for glue. So in this case, I glue that area up again. and then push that glued section against that other fold. I hope you can, so I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's definitely, it's just creating like a little loop. So the two pieces of card are joined together at the bottom. They meet at the bottom of the loop. And then I just hold that in place until I'm happy that it's gone off and then I'll set it to one side until I'm sure it's dried before tackling the next loop. So I'll just continue to work my way around the top of the box in that way so that I end up with two loops on each of these three top panels and then I'll come back to you. Right, I've now reached my last loop 
and so I thought I'd come back to you just to show you how to finish off. I'm also a little bit concerned that you can't really see on the camera what you're aiming for. So I have attempted to draw you a little diagram just to clarify things a little further. So what you're actually trying to do is to create these loops. So you're gluing down a section of card to a point where you want your T, the stem of your T to rest. Then you're curling the card completely around that T and making a fold that will meet up with the previous fold before you're gluing to the next position of your next T and then round the T and the fold to join the other side. And that's what you're trying to do and that will create a nice strong construction for your T's. Now, what you really want to try and avoid doing is gluing and looping around your T and not joining it underneath because I think you can see here that that means you've got a lot, a lot less area for gluing in between your T's and that means when you put your T inside the loop, it's far more likely to pull this up. The process here, the T going in will have a tendency to push down at the same time. So it's not just a lifting action. So that's what you're trying to aim for. So I'm sorry if it's a bit complex and I haven't explained it as well as I should have done, but I'm hoping that that will clarify things for you. Right, so if we just take a look at this last loop here. So that was my last point of gluing. I've measured that um, 5 eighths of an inch to my next fold line and then that can get glued down in that position. Now this is the remainder of that strip of card that's left. So as long as I've got that tight in place where it's going to be glued, I can simply mark a little pencil line either side where that fold line is. Just a little pencil mark. Then I can draw across there to join them together. It may not be quite straight. And then I can just simply use my scissors to cut away at that point the excess, including the pencil mark. And then that should sit nicely on the bottom of my box. So I shall glue that in place now. I've left a little bit of pencil mark there actually. There we go. I might need to rub that out a little bit at the end. So I'll just glue that final section down. And you can see that I've also put some double-sided tape in position there because it helps with that instant grab, as I have said probably far too many times. There we go. So, plenty of glue. Get that backing off that. I think that's where I go wrong. When I put too much glue on, I can't get the backing tape off. Right, so just going to push that in to meet that other fold line. And I can hold that in position until that goes off. So I will get that sorted and come back to you just with the finishing embellishments and the handle. Right, so now that all of those loops are finally fixed in place, we can have a look at our last set of embellishments. And I've just got some more of these little flowers, which were from that poppy stamps die cut that we used for the ends of our box embellishment earlier on. Now, one set of these, when they're going towards making this sort of an, a lever style thing that, that will, will aid opening the box. Now, if they were just used as a single layer, it would not be strong enough. So to, to sort that out, all I've done with that design is to glue two of these flowers together. So let's just quickly do that. So it's as simple as that. 
taking off any excess if need be, but you know what, I'm quite happy with that amount of glue. Just lining everything up with the two sets of die cuts. And just applying pressure until you're sure that all these edges are glued together. And I've done done that with two lots, so you need two layered sections together. So I'll do that with another load off camera. Now the other thing that we can do with the final one, and I'll just supply some glue ready. is to stick this to the back of our box just to create that mirror image and let's just check yep here we are now this flower will span this three quarter of an inch strip of card if you can position the petals accordingly so i'm just going to make sure that it's stretching across that and i'm only going to stick down the section that is on this this side of the fold I'm not going to worry about this I'll come back to that afterwards because if I try and bend that over there now it's going to apply upward pressure to this section at the same time so it's best just to do one facet as it were at a time let the glue go off and finish off afterwards so you can see how that's being applied. Once that glue's gone off, I'll reapply glue to this section if necessary and curl that over that fold line so that we get a nice finish. Similar to this one here. So with that done, we can then, once, once, these, are, once these have dried off a bit, we can then apply them to the front. And I'll come back to you at the point that I'm ready to do that. Right, so I've tidied up that back embellishment there now, so that's completely in place. And I've applied half of one of those double layers of embellishment to the front across that strip in exactly the same way. So I've made sure that the petals are positioned so it spans that whole three quarters of an inch. So all I'm going to do now is to apply some glue to the remaining double layer section and put that onto the back. So let's quickly do that. Just take away some of the excess on there. So it's just a question of lining up and this is going over the whole of the back of this so that actually, you know, at the moment, if you were to push against that, there's a likelihood that it will come off. But because this is going to go against this side of the lid, that will get rid of that problem. So I'm just going to line those petals up at the front. I'm not really worried about the back. It's the front that needs to look neat and tidy. So just bringing them together. Applying some pressure for that glue to take. And as that glue goes off, this is going to become quite a solid area. And that's what helps with the opening and closing of our box. So that's all of our embellishments finished. And we just now need to pay attention to our ribbon handle. Now I have already cut a length of ribbon, which is 15 inches long. And that's probably actually uh, maybe one, one and a half inches longer than it needs to be. So there's plenty of room for trimming back the knots. Now, I am going to be using a very fine crochet hook. This is um, a one millimeter crochet hook to help me pull that ribbon through. But if you don't have that sort of thing, you know, you could just, you might be able to thread it on a, a small tapestry needle, bearing in mind that this little hole at the end here is only one sixteenth of an inch in diameter. So, um, and the other thing you could do is actually attach a little bit of cotton on a needle 
to the end of the ribbon and just pull it through and you can cut that off with the knot afterwards so you've got a few options all I'm doing that might be a bit close to the edge actually is trying to push that crochet hook through that ribbon and hold on to it a little bit tight so that I can just draw the ribbon with a bit of twisting action hopefully yep there we go just draw it into the box so all I need to do now is to create a knot on the end here and I like to sort of push the knot a little bit toward the end of the ribbon as well or pull it depending on what's easier make sure it's a really tight knot now if you're if you want to err on the side of caution you could do a double knot you could add some glue to that knot um, you know that would certainly secure it but I'm okay with that and I'm just going to trim that back to neaten it up and pull that back through that hole now I shall take that through the other end and repeat that process so there's no real need for me to do that on camera you know I think you've seen enough to know what's going on so I'll do that and come back to you at that point right so with all our ribbon in place that's our box finished all we need to do now is to add our golf balls I've got three of those in there got a nice tight fit and then we can put our tees in place so again I hope you can see that that's a nice tight fit those tees are not going anywhere I like to put them in opposite directions but you know feel free to um, put them in whichever direction you prefer last one Oops, that's a looser one, but that's okay, it's still not falling out. And there we are, so that's our little golf ball gift box finished. Now I have got a few colourways to show you, so actually I'll, I'll lay that on its side for you so you can see a little bit better. We've got this prototype that we've seen quite a lot of today, so we've seen that earlier. I've got this pink and maroon one as well so oh I'm a tea missing there I'll we'll pop that one in there we go so that's all sorted now and then finally we've got this one which has got quite strong golf colours I think which is turquoise and a sort of greeny colour So that's another gift box tutorial complete and I do hope that that has been of some use to you. Now before I go I do just want to remind you that you've got those clips coming up that have got um, information in respect of card sizes, scoring information, diagrams etc. And that just leaves me to thank you very much for your time today.